Should I sell my business? This is a question I get asked a ton. I'm Alex Berman, by the way. My last SaaS sold for $2 million, Taplio Tweet Hunter. And so I am known now as a guy that sold his business. Why did I sell? Maybe that's a question for another video, but you guys have been asking, should I sell my business? And so in today's video, I wanna go through how I think about businesses and how to avoid falling into traps that you might be falling into when it comes to wanting to sell your business or wanting to continue on in your business. With that being said, subscribe, like this video, comment down below, and let's get it going. I got this nice shirt. My wife made this for me. She is a legend on the sewing machine. What a good girl. This is the Boston Consulting Group Growth Share Matrix, and this is what I use to guide my decisions. How do I figure out if a business should be sold? First, you gotta figure out what category it's in. So let's talk about these categories. The four categories are rising star, question mark, cash cow, and dog. Let's talk about each one, and then you can start to figure out where your business stands. First up is Rising Star. A rising star company has a high relative market share, makes a lot of cash, uses very little cash, and is growing very fast. This is where you want your business to be. It's rapidly expanding, and it's making you money at the exact same time. When you get a business that looks like this, then you can exit. Taplio Tweet Hunter looked like that. The revenue was flying up and so we got acquired. We didn't have to sell, we could have kept going, but we did and because we're a rising star, our valuation was higher when it was time to sell. Next, let's talk about the cash cow. This is a business that's slowly growing, maybe it's not growing at all, but it is making profit every single month. A good example of this business that's in our portfolio is my consulting business, Email 10K. It's just growing every single month or slowly staying the same, making money, making profit, and just bringing in cash. This is one that you don't have to use very much cash to keep it afloat. It's making you money every single month, but it's not necessarily growing, and the cash generation isn't as high as a rising star might be. It's easy to figure out what to do with a rising star or a cash cow. Rising stars, you typically don't wanna sell. You want to invest in them and capitalize on growth. The only reason I sold my stake in Taplio Tweet Hunter is because I was forced to as a junior partner. And I got a payout, which is sick, but I would have preferred to stay on and continue the growth. Taplio and Tweet Hunter are both expanding rapidly as rising stars tend to do. And so by selling too early, you miss that growth. A cash cow also, you really shouldn't sell. Unless there's a strategic reason you wanna exit the business and move on to something else, you should not sell the thing that's consistently making you money every single month without you having to do much work on it. You just continue to milk that cow for cash. That's why it's a cash cow. Keep milking it, get that cash, use that cash to make cheese, use that cash to make paneer. I'm talking about milk, not cash, but you get what I'm talking about. Now we get into the less clear businesses. First is the dog. The dog business is one that's taking a lot of money for you to sustain. It's not growing very fast and it's not giving you much profit. This is a hard business to grow and it's a real bummer if one of your businesses turns into this. Low growth and low market share. If you have a dog, you need to sell it or get rid of it somehow. Either close it down if it's not profitable or sell it off. And any of these businesses could become a dog at any time. If costs rise too much and growth falls too much, now you got a dog, now you gotta move that out. I wouldn't keep investing in a dog. The other one that's not as straightforward is the question mark. The question mark is a business that could be growing fast, but isn't making much money right now. This is a business that you just started, and so you need to keep putting more money in to figure out where it is. The SaaS that I'm building at startyoursaas.com, because we haven't launched yet, is a question mark. With question marks, you have to decide after an evaluation. You think about it, hey, should I keep investing in this or should I move on? If you invest money, it could become a star. If there's no potential, then it could become a dog. Or if growth stalls but stays profitable, it could become a cash cow. So which category is your business in? Are you a rising star? Are you a dog, a cash cow, or a question mark? I'm gonna go through some questions that you can ask to figure this out. First up, is the product selling like hotcakes or is it collecting dust on the sidelines? There's a lot of indie makers on Twitter that talk about their businesses that make $1,000 a month after five years of work. That is a dog. I'm sorry, that's a dog. You gotta get rid of it. Is it selling like hotcakes or collecting dust? And this changes depending on where you are as an entrepreneur. For some businesses, getting 10 new customers a month is very successful. For other businesses, getting 10 new customers a month is failure. So it just depends on the type of business that you have. For SaaS, if you're only getting 10 trials a month, that's 
not a good business. Second thing to ask is, are customers raving about the product or are they indifferent? Do they love what you're doing or do they not care? If they love what you're doing, it's a good sign. If they don't care, why should you care? Third, is the market growing rapidly or becoming stagnant? For instance, LeadShark was a lead generation database that was later bought by Omni. Is the market for lead generation databases growing or becoming stagnant? The number of lead generation databases is increasing, so people are buying more leads and thus it was good. Fourth question to ask, are we market leaders in the segment or are we struggling to catch up with competitors? If you're struggling to catch up, if everyone seems like they're better than you and faster than you, you should find a new market to compete in. I don't care if your competitors make it seem like it's the easiest thing in the world. If you cannot compete, get out of there or otherwise you risk wasting a bunch of time and money. Fifth question, are we consistently putting in cash to support the business or is it generating good profit on its own? If you're having to fund your business every single month, that's a red flag. Six, is the product something new and exciting or is it something people have seen many times? If it's a product people have seen many times before and it's not selling and it's hard to compete, it's becoming pretty obvious what you need to do. Four more questions. Number seven, do we see a bright future with this product or are we unsure of its long-term potential? If you're unsure whether people are even gonna be using it in five, 10 years and people aren't loving it and it's hard to compete, what are you gonna do? Number eight, are there lots of new customers pouring in or are we relying on old customers? If there's a lot coming in, that's a great sign. If you have to keep digging and scraping the barrel of old customers to make a profit, probably not the best business. Nine, is the product making us more than we're investing or are we just barely breaking even? If you're breaking even for six, seven, eight months at a time, you gotta get out of there. We're in business to make money. We're not in business to break even. We're not running a charity. And number 10, do we have to put a lot of effort to sell this product or does it sell itself? If you have to put a lot of effort in, it's not a good product. Taplio, when it was popping off, was growing automatically. That's how good businesses should look. The trials and everything should happen automatically via word of mouth or just in the background. A customer uses the product, they love it, they tell other customers about it, and they get you going. Same with your agency. We talk about outbounded cold email on this channel. In fact, I wrote cold email manifesto. But to truly grow, your agency needs word of mouth to continue, and you should get more from referrals than you do from any outbound channel. Same with SaaS, you should get more from referrals than you do from paid ads, et cetera. So go through and answer these questions for your business. And you might not even have to answer them on paper. You just think about them and you might know the answers already. You might know you're running a dog or a cash cow or a rising star or maybe even a question mark. So let's say you find out that you have a dog. What are some phrases or things that we might use to trick ourselves into not selling? You might say, we've already put so much time into it, we can't sell. And that's not true. Sunk costs should not dictate future decisions. What matters is where you think it's gonna go from here. If you think your business is not gonna succeed in the future, get out of it now and don't continue to invest. You might also think things will turn around soon, but hope isn't a strategy. You need to either have a concrete plan that you can execute or you need to leave. Third thing you could say is, I can't give it up now. It'll all be for nothing. It's better to cut your losses than continue on to a failing path. Because now, with free time, you can go work on something that will succeed. You might say, we just need a little more time. And the answer to that is, time won't help if the fundamentals aren't sound. In most of these cases, you've had time. You've had months or years, and you've continually seen the same problems over and over again. And so more time won't help you. And the trap that a lot of entrepreneurs get into is thinking, oh, if I just had another six months, if I just had another six months, but think about what happened the last time you said you'd give yourself another six months. Maybe that was six months ago. Where are you now? In the same exact position, watching a video on should I sell my business or not? Something to think about. You might also think our competitors are facing the same challenges. We're not alone. But just because your competitors are having problems doesn't mean that it's the right path for you. There are businesses that grow automatically and that are easy that you can find and start. There's no reason for your business to be hard to scale or hard to grow. If you find something that's in demand and profitable, then it just takes a little bit of pushing to get it over the top. You don't need to consistently be grinding in this business. And then you could think, I've seen other businesses bounce back from worse, but every business is unique. You need to assess your own situation because do you really wanna be that comeback story or is it time to move on to something that will truly succeed quickly for you? Leave a comment down below. What are you thinking about? What's going on in your head? Is there a business that you wanna sell that you've now realized you wanna keep? Let's have a conversation down below. Subscribe for more, smash that like button for content like this, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Berman.